Hi guys, welcome to lecture number 4. In the previous lecture we have covered power diode and we have seen the IV characteristics of power diode and its parameter and some classification of power diode. Okay. In this lecture we will be starting SCR that is the silicon controlled rectifier. So what do you mean by SCR? SCR is three terminal device. What are the terminal? First one is the anode denoted as A. Second is cathode denoted as K. And third one is the gate that is denoted as g so this is a three terminal device which can allow the current to flow only in one direction means it is unidirectional we have seen in lecture number two also it is bipolar means it can block both positive and negative voltage so if i will have to make the iv characteristics in how it will look like this it can block both positive and negative voltage and it can allow only one direction of current to flow so iv characteristics the safe operating area will be in first first and second quadrant so scr is the three terminal four layer device the four layer is denoted as p n minus p n plus so plus minus denotes the heavily and lightly doped like n plus is heavily doped p is normally doped n minus is lightly doped and p is normally doped so i have denoted here like that it is a four layer and three terminal terminal is anode cathode and gate and there is three junction also this junction is known as j1 this junction is known as j2 and this junction is known as j3 so what we are doing we are attaching p n diode consecutively two times p n p n which makes the scr so let us understand the working of scr how scr is working as i already explained you that it is semi controlled device means we can control the on state of this scr but we can't control the off state of this scr off state can be controlled by supply it is not in our hand on state can be controlled by supplying gate current so we will see in this lecture how it is semi controlled so let us see the characteristics of SCR. So there are three modes present in SCR. First one is the reverse blocking mode. Second is the forward blocking mode. And third one is the forward conductive mode. We will see this mode one by one. Let us talk about the reverse blocking mode. What do you mean by reverse blocking mode? In reverse blocking mode, the negative terminal of the supply voltage is connected to anode and positive terminal of supply voltage is connected with cathode. So what is happened? when you will connect like this then see negative terminal of battery is connected with p means this junction j1 will be reverse bias the junction j1 will be in reverse bias so it will be open circuited this is junction j1 okay what about the junction j2 see n is connected with negative terminal and p is connected with positive terminal means this junction j2 will be forward biased so in forward bias it will be short circuited okay this is junction j2 now see the third junction j3 negative terminal of battery is connected with p and positive terminal of battery is connected with n plus means it is in reverse bias so it will again open circuited so whenever you will give negative supply to this scr without supplying gate current ig is zero then what will happen junction j1 and j3 will go into the reverse bias while junction j2 will be in forward bias so whole negative voltage this is the negative voltage the whole negative supply voltage will drop across junction j1 and junction j3 but here you can see that junction j3 consists of p and n plus semiconductor device means it is heavily doped so any semiconductor device which is heavily doped have less voltage withstand capability means it will break quickly if you will apply some amount of voltage so if you will increase the supply voltage more then this junction j3 will break and whole voltage will drop across this junction j1 because this junction j1 is less dope and also it is thicker the n minus layer this is thicker than all other layer means it can withstand junction j1 withstand heavy amount of voltage this junction j1 have high voltage withstand capability while junction j3 will break quickly even applying some negative voltage because of heavily doped 
got it so these are the reverse blocking mode you can see here that reverse blocking mode is similar to diode right only the difference is in diode only one junction are present so in reverse bias the all the voltage are drop across that junction only but in scr the voltage drop across at junction j1 as well as junction j3 okay but the characteristics will be similar to diode so whenever the scr will be in reverse blocking mode then what will happen the characteristics will look like this okay similar to diode and when when you will increase the supply voltage greater than the breakdown voltage then the infinite current will flow and this junction j1 and j3 will break down so we need to keep in mind that the supply voltage must be less than breakover voltage so reverse blocking mode is similar to diode now talk about the forward blocking mode in forward blocking mode what we are doing we are giving vak greater than zero and we are not supplying gate current means ig is equal to zero see positive terminal is connected with p and this negative terminal will be connected with n minus that means junction j1 will be in forward bias means it is short circuited okay now see this junction j2 junction j2 will be in reverse bias why because n minus is connected with positive and p is connected with negative so it will be in reverse bias and junction j3 again it will be in forward bias so equivalent circuit will be like this so in this case also you are seeing that this junction j2 and this is junction j3 so junction j2 will not allow the current to flow means it is blocking so if you will supply positive voltage also without supplying gate current then also the current flowing in this scr will be zero so in this case input voltage will drop across this junction j2 got it so see the forward blocking mode forward blocking mode is here when you were whenever you will get give positive supply then junction j2 will not allow the current heavy amount of current to flow so current will be minimum and if you will again increase continue to increase the positive voltage then the graph will look like this now when you will increase this this junction j2 also have voltage withstand capability means it can be able to withstand some finite amount of voltage that amount of voltage is known as vbo that is voltage v voltage breakover this is the vbo when you will give input voltage greater than vbo when v in is greater than vbo then what will happen this junction j2 will break down and it will get short circuited and at that time the current will start flowing so when v in input voltage is greater than vbo even you will not apply gate current means ig is equal to zero then also the conduction starts so when scr conducts this junction j2 is sorted then what will be the voltage drop across this junction j2 the voltage drop across this junction j2 will be minimum means it will decrease so when you will give supply input voltage greater than bvo then what will happen the current will flow and the graph will shift here at point n because the voltage across this junction j2 will decrease because of short circuit okay so this is the voltage across this junction j2 v j2 got it so this is not the safe practice we are increasing the input voltage greater than the breakover voltage due to which junction j2 breaks and conduction start so this is not the safe practice because we are breaking the junction j2 so if i will do again like this then what will happen the scr will get damaged after four to five times when i will give input voltage greater than vbo so this is not the safe way to turn on the scr although we can turn on by supplying input voltage greater than vbo so this these are the forward blocking mode now talk about the forward conducting mode what is happening in forward conducting mode what we are doing we are supplying gate current across this junction j2 this is my ig so in uh, in forward conducting mode same procedure are there like junction j1 will be short circuited because of forward bias junction j2 will be open circuited and junction j3 will be short circuited and we are giving this input voltage like this now what will happen if you will uh, supply gate current here if you will supply gate current here then the depletion region in this junction j2 there is some depletion width and there is depletion region because of it 
which it is not allowing the current to flow so when you will give supply gate current to this junction j2 then it will neutralize the charge stored across this depletion region means this is something like this this is the depletion region and some negative charge is stored like this and positive charge is stored like this so when you will supply gate current here then what will happen this this stored charge carrier is neutralized by this gate current because of which the depletion width of this junction j2 will get reduced and it starts conducting got it so gate current what is the purpose of giving gate current gate current will neutralize the stored charge across the depletion region at junction j2 got it that's why we are supplying gate current so even if you will apply input voltage less than vbo and you are giving gate current then it will starts conducting overall the depletion width get reduced and it will start conducting that is happening here suppose i am giving input voltage less than vbo here okay i am giving input voltage less than vbo and i am supplying gate current let us say this is i think ig1 okay so if i will apply ig1 gate current then what will happen the stored charge will get neutralized and depletion width decreases and it will get short circuited and finally the current will start to flow means it will go into the conduction state now suppose i will increase the value of gate current more the value of gate current fastest will be the charge neutralization means the width of the junction j2 will decrease fastly and it will move to the conduction state suppose i am giving this is ig2 and this is ig3 okay so here ig1 sorry this is not like this here ig1 will be less than ig2 will be less than ig3 okay if ig3 ig3 if i am supplying gate current more then it will take less time to go into the conduction mode okay so finally we can conclude that more the gate current the conduction starts fastly got it now once the thyristor will go into the conduction state means once the junction j2 will break this is junction j2 once the junction j2 will break by giving gate current then it will not again move into the blocking mode even if you will remove the gate current then also it will be in on state only so even after removing the gate current the scr remains in conduction state so this is the forward conducting mode in forward conducting mode what we are doing we are giving bak greater than 0 and ig not equal to 0 okay as i said earlier that once the thyristor will go into the forward conducting mode by supplying gate current then if you will remove the gate current then also it will be in conduction state means in order to turn off the scr there must be some separate commutation circuit is required why because we cannot control the off state of scr we can control the only the on state of scr by supplying gate current that's why it is known as semi controlled okay so in order to turn off this scr separate commutation circuit is required or either we have to change the input supply so that it will go into the reverse blocking mode so turn off state depends upon the supply or the commutation circuit which we insert in the scr to turn off now if i have to represent all the modes with respect to input voltage then how will i represent like in reverse blocking mode what we are doing we are supplying bak less than zero and ig gate current is equal to zero second mode is forward blocking mode in this what we are doing we are we supplying vak greater than zero and ig is equal to zero means we are not supplying gate current third is the forward conducting mode in this what we are doing we are supplying vak greater than zero and ig not equal to zero means we are giving gate current so that the junction j2 breaks and it starts conducting means scr goes into the conduction state now how much time it will take to move into the conduction state that depends upon the gate current means width of the gate pulse if the gate current will be more then it will go into the conduction state fastly if the gate current will be less then it will take some time to go into the conduction state now i need to define the two term here first one is the latching current and second one is the holding current what do you mean by latching current so latching current is defined as minimum amount of anode current required to turn on the 
SCR. See here, this is the latching point. N is the latching point and the current flowing at this point will be latching current. So this is the minimum amount of anode current required to turn on the SCR known as latching current. There is one more current known as holding current denoted as IH that is the holding current. What do you mean by holding current? As I already said you, once the thyristor gets on, then it we cannot turn off the SCR. In order to turn off the SCR, we need to decrease the current up to a desired value known as holding current. That means holding current is the maximum amount of anode current below which SCR won't conduct. This is the holding current. Suppose the holding current is like is somehow here. So this is the maximum amount of anode current below which SCR won't conduct. So in nut and cell we can say that when IA is greater than IL then SCR is on. When anode current is greater than the latching current then SCR will be in forward conducting mode and when IA will be less than IH that is the holding current then SCR will remain in off state. Got it? So these are the two current which you need to understand what is latching current and what is holding current. Now how will I make anode current less than holding current? As the SCR gets on means the anode current is greater than the latching current. Now to turn off the SCR we have to make anode current less than the holding current and holding current is like somehow below the latching current. IL is always greater than IH. In IV characteristics you can see. So holding current is less than the latching current. So in order to make anode current less than the holding current, what we have to do? We have to attach a commutation circuit to turn off this SCR. So separate commutation circuit is required. Got it? We cannot turn off the SCR by removing the gate current. We have to attach the separate commutation circuit in order to turn off the SCR which we will see later. Now let us summarize what we have studied. We have studied first reverse blocking mode. In reverse blocking mode what we are doing? We are supplying negative voltage to the SCR without supplying gate current. Now second one is the forward blocking mode. In this we are supplying VAK greater than zero and we are not giving the gate current. In this case also it is blocking the forward voltage and it is not conducting unless and until VAK greater than voltage breakover voltage. Okay, so this is not the safe practice. So we don't make input voltage greater than the breakover voltage in order to turn on the SCR. Now to turn on the STR, SCR, what I what we will do? We will supply VAK greater than zero, and we will also give gate current. When we will give gate current, then junction J2, the store charge across the junction J2, will decrease, and the depletion width also decreases which allow the junction J2 to conduct. In this way, we will make the SCR turn on. Now to turn off the SCR, we don't have any control. Even if you will remove the gate current, then also SCR won't go into the off state. Why? Because in order to go into the off state, the anode current must be less than the holding current. And to do so, we need to attach the commutation circuit separately to turn off the SCR. That we will see later on. So that's all about this lecture. In the next lecture we will see SCR triggering method means what are the method available to turn on the SCR then we will see SCR protection means what we have to insert in the circuit in order to protect the SCR. So if you guys understood the concept then please like this video for new updates you can subscribe to this channel also you can ask your query in our Facebook group.